The white explorer who came into the... Yeah, the white explorers <laughs> didn't uh, do much uh, good coming uh, into other lands. That is true. I'll agree yeah, with you there. Because, because, well, because, first of all, man... But it's interesting. If you look at a lot of the other explorers, like Muslim explorers that went to China, they didn't go in there and conquer and massacre and genocide. No. They built bridges. But like when you see Columbus and what he did in South America and Central America and America... Uh, well, Columbus did there was also come afterwards, but... Yeah, those that came uh, after, actually, but he laid down the foundation yeah, and, and Amerigos before him. A, a, a five Northern European Scandinavians went to Arabia in 1760. Interesting. And uh, only one survived, but it was in illnesses right. that caused the death of the other four. Gotcha. And a, a, a man traveling alone in, in Arabia in those days would not be afraid for his life. Amazing. He had something taken away from him, but never his life. But the moment he got back into Eastern Europe, <laughs> if he wasn't in a huge caravan, he would be, he would be robbed. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at history, you find a lot of that. That is true. Even if you look at Jerusalem under Salahuddin Ayyubi, and you look at Jerusalem under the Crusaders, it was very different. And under Salahuddin Ayyubi, Christians and the Jews Crusaders were allowed were to... They were a bunch of bastards. They were. They were. That's, I'm glad you used the word, not me, but, but I agree with you there. Um, and if you look at the Spanish Inquisition and how they dealt with other religions. Oh, gosh, yes. It's pretty, but but for us, he has always had a brutality streak. Yeah, and just look at the way the Catholics and the, and the Protestants dealt with each other during the English yep. uh, Revolution. I mean, even if you look in Ireland right now, it's still going back and forth. The IRA oh, yes. and Sinn Fein and all that kind of stuff. But the question is mm -hmm. that when you get religion in your government. Mm. You are failing to acknowledge the tyranny of the majority. The tyranny of the majority says the majority decides how everyone should live. But but in but Islam they, we don't we don't say that. No, but there still is a certain element of it. No, no, no. So so well, let me explain. In, in as it is practice, it is. That might be true because because in practice a lot of Muslim countries don't rule by Islamic law. They rule by their own mindset because a lot of them were colonized by the British. Like if you go to Pakistan, they have a parliament like the British, they have a prime minister like the British, they have elections like the British. So it's not ruled by Islamic law, it's ruled by British law. And the same thing you will find in Malaysia and all other countries that used to be uh, ruled by the British. Yeah. And in North Africa, you find uh, traits of what the French and Italians have left behind from even a lot of their government. It works in French in North yeah. Africa well, or in Africa Italian. And to some extent, the Middle East mm. are governed by the imposition of, of borders by the British and Europe. You are a very intelligent man. You are well read. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, for instance, many people don't know about Africa this. Africa yeah. was, was in the old ancient times ruled by tribal yes. or group borders. Yes. And, and there wasn't necessarily always peace between them, but that's a different story. Yeah. When, they, when the colonial powers came in, they just chunked up the land the way they suited them and created borders right. that still exist and, and And they caused a lot of problems, like in Kashmir yeah. when the British were leaving oh, and the gosh, problem yes. that they caused, or in Iraq when they took Kurdistan and cut it up and, and mixed up people that weren't naturally this working this together. Only son. <laughs> hey, the Bible has many other sons for God. You want to come talk about it? No, I guess not. <laughs> this is not the way communication works, buddy. <laughs> but I appreciate your ability to have this civil conversation. So, so I, I am in agreement with you that that the the borders and the problems caused by the colonial powers have have bogged down progress in Africa and the Middle East and a lot of these places. And and the problems we're seeing a lot of political problems right now are also because of Western interference. Like if you look at ISIS, there was no such thing as ISIS until the U.S. invaded Iraq and the and the. the there, there's no doubt that, but, but European, but particularly more modern time, American dominance mm -hmm. of economic development yes. in the Middle East had much to do with the rise of anti-American sentiment. Sure. You know, I was a consultant, management consultant in Europe. Wow, where? Germany. Okay. And when people ask, where are you from? I always smile and say, oh, I'm from Norway. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody loves the Norwegians. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was in Europe last time, uh, it was during the Trump election. And wow. when they asked me where I was from, I said Canada. 
<laughs> I, was in, I was in Europe in October mm. this year and I almost pretended to be a Norwegian. <laughs> I had actually flown from Canada, that's why I was <laughs> able to keep that within being truthful. <laughs> yeah, I was born in Norway. I was oh, wow. five years old when I came. I love Norway, I've been there a few times. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I did. I, I actually went to Sweden, Norway, and I went to a place called Calix, which is where the, uh, the, the uh, Arctic Circle begins. I was auditing a medical f the device facility. And it's very interesting when I when I went to Austria, I saw old mosques that had been built during the times of the Ottomans, yeah. and a lot of the the uh, the Turkmen people that have actually are the generations from them are the Eastern Europeans, yeah. and the history there is very interesting to me. I was and, in Bosnia, which oh, is wow. a large Muslim. And I have I, not I was been in, there. A, in a mosque there. It was nice. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, I, we had a, a lady who was telling us and she was very respectful. Excellent. So I, I assumed she was Muslim, but she told me she was an atheist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. There she, are... she knew that when you talk about a religion, you talk with respect. Of course. And, that, and that's how you should deal with all religions. Yes. And this is why you see people like yell yes, and go, yes. we like to have a conversation. Yeah. And the thing is, if you look at Islam, it's not a, a organized religion in the Western sense. It is a very spiritual religion that has to do with your direct connection. So we don't go confess to a man. You don't have to go to an Imam and confess your sins. No. If you want to confess, it's a spiritual bond. You, you raise your hands, you pray, you get up, you, you, you make ruku, you bow, you prostrate. But, That's, but, but Protestants do not. Yeah, Protestants do not. Catholics have, <laughs> yeah. but, but Protestants have their own practices. Like, 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 let's look at Christmas, right? Christmas, you will not find it in the Bible. It's, you're a well-read man. You know this was a pagan it, it festival, nothing right? To do with, with exactly. It's, it's got nothing to do with Christianity. And in Norway, they come to the extreme because the midsummer, which is the yeah. 23rd of December, yeah. they call it the day of St. Hans. Interesting. And St. Hans is a shortening of Johannes, right. which means the day of St. John in English. Very interesting, yeah. <laughs> so, so this is so, interesting. So, so they have taken the, what were the two pagan ancient yes. celebrations of the changes yes. from cold to warm, right. from, from darkness to light, light. from light to darkness. Mm -hmm and made them Christian holidays. And they, they brought it into <laughs> Christianity. I, I totally agree with you. And yeah. that's the funny thing. You see these churches and you see these people celebrating Christmas. And when you take a Bible to them, or you take historic research to them that shows that, that Jesus was born in the summertime and you explain to them these were Nordic pagan festivals. Yeah. Nobody wants to learn that. They don't want to truly follow no, the I mean, pure word no. of God. Yeah. In Islam, and, and, and we keep our celebrations to the pure celebrations of Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitr, which were Abrahamic celebrations that came down and we have them still preserved. We don't like to invent new celebrations or bring pagan festivals. We pray the way the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prayed, the way the Prophet Jesus and Abraham prayed. We don't invent kneeling and having wafers put into your mouth by some guy kneeling over you, <laughs> all these kind of strange inventions. Yeah. No, no, I understand. Each have differences. Mm -hmm. but. Um, the word Yule itself mm -hmm. is the pagan word. Mm, interesting. For the mid for the midwinter. Wow. Yeah, so this is so, this is something so <laughs> this is something we try to educate people about, but a lot of people don't even want to learn. People no, people, people have their own they just want to spend their money and cause consumerism and buy things and get gifts and believe in Santa Claus. Well, Where did Santa yeah. Claus come from? <laughs> Where did this concept come from in the Bible? Where did reindeer and Christmas trees well, come in Jerusalem? <laughs> Yeah, no, it, I mean, that just mm. gifts are not the important part of Christmas. Right, and I, the thing is, I mean, if you want to give a gift, give a gift any time of the year. That's a great thing to do, yeah. to make somebody happy. But why, why bring a pagan festival? As a matter of fact, I have a, a, a tradition with my wife. Mm. The unbirthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, the unbirthday gift. Yeah, but just do a surprise. <coughs> yeah, that's great. Any time during the year, just bring yeah. a gift. When That's it's not, wonderful. Not expected. The Prophet Muhammad, the peace be upon him, told us that you guys should spread peace by saying salam and you should give gift because it develops love, you know, all the time. And that's a beautiful thing to do. Alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. So, have you read the Quran? Have you. No, you, you're I, so I, well I read. I read philosophy, Adaloo. but not. Uh, Excellent. Not so you should read the Quran. I mean, you're already such a well-read man. You you, yeah. you look like you're yeah. able to. I I I still kind of believe that if there if there's a God, which mm -hmm. is kind of illogical, if you pardon me. All right. 
Let, uh, let's discuss that. God has to be an animist. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's think about this, right? If we say there's no God, and we look at the universe, and you, you've studied science, you've studied yeah. the human body, the perfection that goes into your liver and your kidney and your lungs and your eyebrows and your eyelashes and how they operate, it is illogical to say this is without design, right? No, but actually, I had, my kidneys are not doing so well. <laughs> I mean, but, but now you appreciate all the years that they were doing well, right? And right now I'm recovering from the shingles. <laughs> ah, and that's rough, that's rough. Somebody really messed me up. <laughs> oh, so, so this may be a reminder, it may be good for you, right? To kind of give you, when you have kidney problems, then you start appreciating, go ahead, all these years, all these years that your kidneys functioned, look at your liver, look at your yeah, other organs. Man. I'm only you are! 79 <laughs> is young, yes, exactly. But I've, been, I've been to emergency rooms four times this mm. year, and, and the, the third time was Ljubljana in Slovenia. Wow. That's... And they didn't know what to do with me, <laughs> so I ended up in Vienna. <laughs> oh, wow, in Vienna. <laughs> so think about this. If we look at the human journey, there was a time when you were in the womb of the mother, yeah. right? right? And that was a different existence. You had liquid going through your lungs. You had yeah. a, a tube feeding you. You didn't see people. You didn't have a job. You didn't have money coming in or bank accounts. You didn't chew with your teeth, right? And there was an existence of your being before that, right? Now, when you, when you finish that nine months of life, around nine months, and you're born into the life of this world, then we live, you know, between whatever, one to a hundred to two hundred, maybe years. That's, that's the span of this life. That's how it's, it's not going to go past that. And then as a human, as a thinking creature with more than just a physical body, with a soul. And how do we know there's a soul? If you look at a dead body, it's got all the organs, but that spark, that's the soul is gone. Right? Yes, so, so, but, so it doesn't do end there. When do you as a human define death? That's an excellent question. And this is something that we discuss with Islamic scholars about when do we actually consider a person death, dead. No. A lot of people, they consider it to be brain death when your brain dies. Because this is a point where, you know, even if your heart fails, it's irreversible. Exactly. Yeah. And, and death is only a transition, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if you, if you look at energy, Energy never finishes. Even you turn a light bulb on, that energy never dies. It just changes form, right? Yeah. So we believe the ruh, the soul, it also doesn't finish. Once it's created, it has a beginning, but it has no end. It changes form, right? And it changes so life aren't cycles. You then, aren't you then going into more of a Buddhist or not, it's not, you know, not Buddhist, uh, Hindu? Hindu? Not really. Or, so. Or, uh, you know something they you know they do not acknowledge death but they say it's a recreation except if you reach nirvana right which and that's the ultimate rest so that you shall you shall struggle no more so if you look at the hindu religion it seems like it has developed over time and different philosophies and then there is Jainism, then there is, I mean, Buddhism is also an offshoot because yeah. Mahatma Buddha himself was not a Buddhist, he was a Hindu. Yeah. And you have many different worships of different idols. You have uh, Ganpati even, Mama, even you have Gagandi. You have, you have two major different groups. Between who? Sunni and the Shia. So, so Sunni so, and Shia is a political split. The religious belief was originally all one until yes. you had a political split and then people, especially France and other countries, they, they, they instigated this to become worse, to become a religious split. If you look at Ali, for example, he didn't pray and they according to the way of the Shia. The same about you. Sure, we, we've, we've, we've had sit downs with them. But if you look at before the time of the split between Ali and Muawiyah, there was no such thing as Shia, right? Historically. So that means they, Shia means sect. Linguistically. So Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we are the group, the original. The Shia, they split. And like that, you have Ahmadis and Qadianis and the but nation the, the of Shia, Kufur. The Shia may say that you guys split. Well, that but, you, but that's so historically I mean, not accurate, right? Well, historically, it, there was no such thing as Shia until the time of Ali and Muawiyah split, right? Historically, I'm not talking about a religious belief. I'm not talking yeah. about a personal but, belief. But, 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 because that, the, that is the hallmark of all the religions that mm -hmm. they feel that they are the true descendants 
the true believers. But, but this that is, is but that's that a good the nature but that's that's a good that's a good point of discussion. So yeah. when we sit with the Shia, for example, we see them say, Ya Ali, oh Ali help us. Right? Yeah. But when we go to the Quran, we don't find that. In the Quran it says Iya can abudu wa iya can astain that only Allah can we worship and ask from and only Allah can we seek aid from right yeah. so we have sit down with Shia it's not it's not like you know that we haven't sat down with them but the issue is we are not a sect we are following that same religion that the Prophet Muhammad and his companions for upon they admit that they are a sect that's why the name is called Shia Shia in Ali the sect of Ali they know they split that they have never told us you are the split but but one of the problems with mm -hmm. the Bible and mm -hmm. the Quran mm -hmm. is that much of it is written after the death of Great the, people, question. the people. But that's that actually not true about the Quran. The Quran, all of it historically, there's a book called Al Itqan of a Siyuti. If you like, I have it, I can bring it to you. It documents how the entire Quran was written down during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad. If you say about the New Testament, I would agree with you because if you look at the apostles, they didn't write uh, John, Matthew, Luke. Uh, what's the other one? They wrote them. Uh, Matthew, Luke, John, and uh, what's Mark. The other? Mark, thank you. They, it was not written by the apostles. Research shows they were written about 70 to 100 years later. Exactly. Paul was again 70 years later. I agree with you, but this is not true about Islam. That's why I encourage yeah, you to learn about the Quran. Quran. The okay. entire Quran, word by word, was written down on manuscripts, on bones, on leather papers during the lifetime of the Prophet. It was memorized by many of the companions of the Prophet word by word, letter by letter, from beginning to end, where you could tell them, recite from this chapter, this verse, and they could recite. And this is historically proven. I'd love you for you to no, research that. Blow, blow my brain. <laughs> huh? Exactly. And then in that first generation, the, the, the companion of the Prophet himself, Uthman, he documented and sent out copies of the Quran that we still have manuscripts for. In England, there's a called the Birmingham Quran. You can look, Google this, not by Muslims, non-Muslims. They found pages that were carbon dated to the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from Surah Taha. And it matches exactly like the Quran we have today. We have, so this is what I'm saying. I'd love for you to research Islam. And I believe that you would become a Muslim because you have the intelligent mindset of researching and learning, you're open-minded. It, it doesn't take it doesn't take I'm that long. Too many you are a, you, you're an avid reader. I can tell you could probably get to the Quran in a week. Uh, but I'll give you this as a gift. You know, try to read as much as you can. You know, and and when you have questions, please come and sit with us. I know that that if you as as I see you to be are open-minded and read and research about how the Quran was preserved how the Sahaba, the companions memorized it and wrote it down. Zayd ibn Thabit, who used to write down from the Prophet, he is the one that compiled it together as a book and made manuscripts during time of Ottoman center. We still have those. Wa alaykum salam. Alhamdulillah. So we still have those manuscripts to reference. That's why all Muslims have one Quran. You know, the Mormons have a different Bible. They have the Book of Mormon. The Catholics have different amount of chapters, right? But if you go to a Shia even, if you go to an Ahmadi, we only have one Quran, 114 chapters, 30 juz, 30 sections, only one, begins with Fatiha, ends with Nas. You will not find the types of things that you find in the corruption in the Bible. So I'd love for you to research it. I have, I have a Bible from 1846. Excellent. If you don't mind, I'd love to read it sometime. Uh, I have a current Bible and I find contradictions all over it. <laughs> but you will well, not find yeah, a single I, contradiction I, in the Quran. Well, what turned me away from Christianity more than anything else was the dogmas and the money grabbing. And I agree oh, with you. I agree with you. A hundred percent. If you look at the, the Catholic Church, if you look at the Protestants, yeah. you, you look at the money. Now Muslims, you will not, like all of us here, we're volunteers. We don't get paid. Yeah. Even, the, even in our mosque, the one who leads the prayer, the Imam, doesn't get paid. The one who gives the lectures, gives the classes, doesn't get paid. We do it solely for the pleasure of our Creator. We don't want to make money. Even when we give no, zakat. I used to be a volunteer down at the house in Norway and I didn't get paid either. <laughs> <laughs> but your preacher did. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. But, but that's the difference between us. Years ago. <laughs> well, it's time to come to a mosque. <laughs> well, there's actually one in my neighborhood. Excellent. Okay, I guess Balboa, the yeah. big mosque.
Aziz Abu Bakr. Yeah, Love I, for I, you to I go there walk, sometime. I walk to it. <laughs> Excellent, walk Just to it one day. No, I, I live in La Mesa. But we can go to any mosque. We don't segregate yeah, yeah. this way. Yeah, no, but no. I live in La Mesa, so it's a little far from me. I go there if I'm in the neighborhood. And that's the one I used to. I used to live by there. I love that mosque. But now I go to one called Ribat in La Mesa because it's the closer to one to yeah, me. Sure, sure. But you should go there sometime. Walk yeah. to it. It'll be good exercise. Well, let me look at this thing. Excellent. Read the Quran. And I ask Allah to guide you. And uh, it was a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.